Hi, it's Mike from Pretzels Expert, and today I'm going to take a look at the Acon Digital Equalize plugin. Now, some people may think, well, why do we need yet another equalizer? Now, there's a huge range of options, and different products suit different people, and there are different features in each of the different products. So let's take a look and see what the Acon Digital Equalize has to offer. Well, it's a very nice, clean, simple display. We've got our graphical interface here. We can get hold of uh, sections. So here's one band. We can adjust the cue, but we can also do something that you perhaps haven't seen in other equalizers. You can see there we've got this band, but it's now got a sort of flattened top. So we can boost a particular range but not have a specific peak. So that's a very interesting new little feature in the Acon Digital Equalize plugin. Obviously we can go up and we can go down. We can obviously adjust the cue, get it really quite tight. And you can see as I move around, it's giving me the cue in octaves is really quite useful just gives us a sense because often I find that different EQ plugins have got a Q factor but they very rarely match up so that's really nice to see there and then as I move the frequency around you can see here that both the frequency and also the note value are being displayed as well as the attenuation or gain so again, all that information being displayed. So if you need to go for a particular note, then you can go and find it. E4, push it, or E4, cut it. So very, very useful little features. So I'm just going to hit the reset button to just reset that back to scratch. So we've got a selection of different uh, filter types here. We've got our low cut or high pass, depending on which way you want to describe it. We've got some shelving, uh, our usual parametric cue. We've got a notch filter, which is really useful for notching out problem areas. We've got a high shelving and then our high cut or low pass filter as well with the associated range of controls. But we've got a single band that's all we've got here, number one. To get additional bands, we just keep hitting the plus button. So now we've got another band. And if I hit an, on there, we've now got another band. So we could make that a high cut filter. So we've got lots of different options there. So let's go back to the reset. And uh, let's have a listen to a kick drum. So one of the first things I want to do with this kick drum is just give it a bit more of a click. You can see there, you can start to see the shape. Maybe we'll just narrow it down. And the analyzer here is showing me the difference. The, the lighter gray color is the input here. And then we've got the analyzer output in green. So we can see, even on the spectrum analyzer, exactly what I'm doing. And then let's add another band and perhaps just give the low end a bit more solidness. One of the other things you can do is to solo a band. So if we solo, we should go back to this high band. So now what we're listening to is what's in the band. So if I open the band out, we hear more and more of the drum. So what we're listening to is just what's inside that band. So again, it can really help find particular problems. Equally, we can do the reverse. We can actually mute that band. So we can just take out the audio that's in that band. So again, it can really help to analyze what's going on. And 
And there we go, I'm happy with that. So let's now take a look at what we might need to do with a snare drum. So let's just change that over. Now here's my snare drum. So what I did here with this band, and notice as soon as I click on a point, it changes, it becomes the active band, the colors change down here. So now we're controlling uh, band two. What I wanted to do here was just to give it a little bit more uh, solidness. So, and again, you can see the different harmonics, the different elements of the drum sound, and also just wanted to brighten up the top end a little bit with this one. So if we just hit bypass, So now let's move on to uh, a bass guitar. One of the things just sort of warm up the, the nice bass sound. And we'll add another band because I like my bass guitar to have a bit of a click to it. So we'll just find a click, maybe narrow that down a little bit. So that's all very uh, normal. Now I'm going to add one more band. So we'll hit the plus button here. And I'm going to make it a low cut filter, a high pass filter. And then let's now make it much steeper. You can see now that I can actually make it up to 120 dB per octave, which is very, very steep. At the moment, we're using this mixed phase setting here. There is a minimum phase, and then you'll notice that the latency goes away. And there's also a linear phase, which uh, again increases the amount of latency, but of course is linear phase. So all the elements are treated with the same amount of phase. If you're in a minimum phase, or perhaps one might call it an analog uh, emulation, then when you pass different frequencies through an analog equalizer, the phase changes differently for different frequencies. And so one of the things that we have with digital equalizers is the option for linear phase. Uh, but of course, linear phase requires a significant amount of latency. And also there can be a, some side effects, some often called pre-ringing, where because an equalizer is actually quite close to an oscillator. And so if you start doing severe things like this very steep curve, then you can get ringing, or it can also manifest in a range of different ways. And one of the things that can happen if you do a very steep low cut like this to say a bass guitar, if we just run this sequence through here now, I'll just play it again. Have a listen to the transients. Now if we go into the minimum phase mode, the attack, the transients on those notes is much nicer. When we go back to linear phase, it's actually just taken some of those transients off. Even though we're not filtering up at the high end, we're filtering down at the low end. But there's this interesting setting here called mix phase, which is sort of half and half. So actually what they've been able to do is to have a lot of the benefits of the linear phase, but without some of the side effects. So if you like, it's a sort of half and half, it's halfway between the two. Uh, and it's very effective because the mix phase mode, in this case, still maintains the transients that we had in the minimum phase, but we didn't have in the linear phase mode. So that's a really, really useful little feature. So let's move on to a piano and take a listen to what we can do with a piano sound. So this is now a stereo piano.
So again, I can take that first band. I can add another band. Add a further one, maybe just brighten up the top end a little bit. Maybe I'll turn this first one into shelving. Now at the moment we're processing both channels the same. We're using this process both channels mode. But you can see here that we've got the options to process just the left hand channel with this band, just the mid, so we've got MS, so we can do separate channels or we can do MS processing. It may well be that for this band I can go into S and actually I can take out some of the low end in the S channel. So if there's low end that's starting to spill across both channels, so it's sort of uh, got stereo width in the low end, by using this low shelving control, I can actually get rid of that image width in the low end. And in fact, there are a range of uh, presets up here as well. So if we go into the stereo processing, you can see here that we've got low side reduction. So that's now set us up a low shelf filter. Only in the side. Now, of course, I can add another band. And I can brighten up the top end. On both channels. Another band, maybe just warm up the low end, both channels, whilst leaving the S, just taking out the low side reduction. So again, very, very versatile EQ module here. So this really isn't any old EQ. It's a very, very powerful plugin. Lots of features that you wouldn't necessarily find on other EQ plugins. Obviously, the option to do these types of features, left only, right only, some and difference, are on other EQ plugins. But I like the way that it's very simple to access through these individual buttons. You know exactly what you're getting. The analyzer, again, other EQ modules do have analyzers, but it's very easy to use. It's very clear display. Obviously, the mixed phase option is, I think, unique to Equalize from Acon Digital. And the fact that we can have up to 12 bands, but we just keep it nice and simple. Every time you want a new band, you just add it. We've got the option to be able to solo bands or to mute bands. That's a really neat feature as well. Everything is color-coded, so it's all very clear what's going on. We've got a redo and an undo, so I can just undo the last change or put it back. So again, that's really useful to have that sort of redo and undo cue. Uh, there we've got overall gain, so if we're starting to put in a lot of boost, we can just back that off to make sure we don't hit headroom anywhere. We've got all the standard EQ uh, settings. One of the, uh, in the audio restoration option, one of the presets is remove 50 hertz hum. So you can see here that we've got a whole range of notch filters all landing on the different harmonics of 50 Hz mains hum. So if you haven't got access to a denoiser or dehum module, then again, that can be really, really useful because that's effectively what most dehum or debuzz modules are doing is they're just putting notches in, uh, bang on the harmonics. So that's a really useful little preset. Again, in the audio restoration, there is a just a remove rumble. You can do a lot with remove rumble by actually just putting on the S. So actually just processing the S rather than both of them. Because often the rumble has got stereo information in it. For example, when I'm doing classical recordings and I'm using an MS pair, I often have to put more high pass filtering in the S channel because actually it's picking up quite a lot of the room acoustic 
and by just filtering out what's in the S channel, I'm not impacting the low end of the main audio, but I'm getting rid of the low end ambience. So I hope that's given you an insight into this great little Equalize plugin from Acon Digital. As with all the Acon Digital plugins, very well designed, very clean, lovely interface, simple and easy to use, and most importantly, they are very cost effective. I'll see you again soon.